So you're getting dressed in the morning. You've got a choice of three different sh uh, shirts, blue, green, or yellow, two pairs of pants, jeans, or khakis. Okay. All right. So what do you guys usually put on first, your pants or your shirt? Your shirt. Okay. How many put people put on their pants first? How many people put on their shirt first? Interesting. Okay. Well, let's go with the majority. You're going to put your pants on first. Okay. So you've got two choices to make. Jeans or khakis? Okay. Well, no, we're going to do, we're going to pretend that it's, you know, kind of like a 50-50 chance here. So jeans or khakis? Okay, so you got your pants on, and now you have to color, pick a color shirt. Okay, so let's say you do put the jeans on. Now you've got three options for the shirt. What are the three options? Blue, green, or yellow, okay? Blue, green, or yellow. And same with the khakis. Now, I personally probably wouldn't wear khakis with a yellow shirt, but I told you we're putting fashion aside for now. Blue, green, or yellow, okay? And what we have here are six different outfits, right? If we go at this branch, we've got jeans with a blue shirt. And this branch, is jeans with a green shirt. This branch is jeans with a yellow shirt. Okay, this branch is khakis with a blue shirt, khakis with a green shirt, or khakis with a yellow shirt. So there's our six, our six different outfits. Okay, now would there be a faster way of doing this, of getting that number six, from the two options and the three options. How could we do that? Yep. We multiply them together, yes. And this is what the fundamental counting principle tells us. The fundamental counting principle essentially tells us that when you have a certain number of de decisions to make, Right? and you have a certain number of options for each decision, the total number of possibilities that you have is the number of options multiplied together. Okay? So, for each decision, you make, how did I just phrase that? Um, multiply, multiply, multiply the number of options for each decision. I think I just like, repeated myself, but other ones, oh well. Together to get the total. Okay, so in this scenario, we're kind of making two decisions, right? So I'm going to kind of, for every decision that I'm making, I'm going to represent that decision with a blank space, okay? So here's a blank space, and this is for my pants. And here's another blank space, and this is for my shirts. And in each blank space, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in the number of options that I have for each of these decisions or for each of these choices that I'm making. Okay, so for my pants, I've got two different options. And for my shirts, I've got three. And I'm gonna multiply that together to give me six outfits.
Okay. Now, with something like this, we've got a small number of total possibilities of outfits. We could absolutely draw a tree, tree diagram here, right? Because it's a pretty small little tree diagram. Okay. This is called a tree diagram, by the way, the thing that I just drew on the board. Um, but once you get into some really big numbers, right, this doesn't really become practical because we're going to have tree branches going all every which way. If we end up with something where there's like hundreds of options or thousands of options, well, firstly, that would take a really long time to draw a tree like that. And then what also happens is you start to lose track of all the branches. And it's not very efficient. OK. So here's another example. If there's five shirts, four pairs of pants, three different pairs of shoes, how many different outfits? Well, how many choices are we making when we get dressed? Three. So I'm going to set up three spaces for each choice. One, two, three. OK, so one for the shirt, one for the pants, and one for the shoes. OK, and then, and, and really, like, I, I you don't actually have to put them. If you want to get dressed in a different order, you could switch the order around. I suggest you don't put your shoes on first before your pants. But everybody has their own way. And for our pants, we, or sorry, for our shirts, we have five possibilities, five different options. For our pants, we've got four. And for our shoes, we've got three. So to get the total, we just multiply these together. And that comes to... Uh, yeah, 60. 60 outfits. Okay. All right, here's another one. How many ways can you arrange the letters in the word micro? So we want to arrange all of the letters in the word micro. Well, firstly, how many letters are there? Five. So we've got to make an arrangement of five letters. So we've got to place five different objects, five different things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make five spaces, because I need a space for what's going to go first in the arrangement. That's my first choice. What's going to go second in the arrangement? That's my second choice. What's going to go third? And so on and so forth. OK? So this is my first letter, second letter, third letter, fourth letter, fifth letter. OK, so first, second third, fourth, and fifth. OK, so imagine, actually, you've got these letters in a word micro. You kind of almost want to imagine that uh, you've got like the Scrabble tiles with these five letters on them, and they're in the Scrabble bag. OK, and you're pulling the, the letters out one by one. So when you start and you're placing the first letter, how many letters are in that bag? Five, yeah, so you've got five options for that first letter. Okay, so now you're gonna move on to the second one. How many letters have you got now? There's only four left in the bag, yeah, because you've already put one down. So once you take one out of the bag and put it in the first space, there's only four left here. So now there's four. What about for the third one? Three, yeah, and then two, and then one. Okay. And when we multiply these all together, we get 120. And by the way, when we start at five and multiply backwards, five times four times three times two times one, we'll talk more about this tomorrow, but we could also write that as something called five factorial, OK? And that's this. It's not just a five that's really excited, OK? It's a five with an exclamation point at the end. And we'll f actually talk about where to locate that button on your calculator, because then you don't have to actually enter all of those numbers into your calculator. So if you need to go 12 factorial, because you're arranging 12 letters, you don't have to go 12 times 11 times whatever on your calculator. Well, I'll show you where that factorial button is. And then you can just press that button. And that, then your calculator will do all that work for you. Okay? 
All right. Here's another one. Okay, you're driving to Edmonton. Suppose there's three major highways from Calgary to Red Deer, four major highways from Red Deer to Edmonton. Okay, how many different routes can one travel from Calgary to Edmonton? Okay, how many people have driven to Edmonton before? Most of you. Maybe not driven yourself, but you've been in a car or a bus. You gotta st stop through Red Deer, right? You go through Gasoline Alley. Um, I once had to sit in Gasoline Alley for four hours to wait out a tornado before I came back to Calgary. Um, anyway, so we, we have to kind of, we got to get to C from A to C, but we've got to go, stop through B. So we've got to do two, two parts to this. Part one and part two. Okay, so part one is going to be Calgary to Red Deer. We've got to make a choice of how we're going to get there. How are we going to get to Red Deer? And then the second part of the trip is going to be from where to where? Red Deer to Edmonton. Red Deer to Edmonton. Okay. How many options do we have for the first leg of the trip? Three. Yeah. Okay. How many options do we have for the second leg? Four, yeah. So the total possible routes that we have to get from Calgary to Edmonton is 12. Okay, and this is good because then if there's a traffic jam on one, you can pick a different one, right? You never want like just one option to get from one city to another. All right, so I'm going to give you guys 10-ish minutes to work on these questions on the next page. All right. So we're going to add in a layer of complexity, OK? Sometimes there's restrictions on some of the options. Okay. So for example, if I'm asking you to arrange a set of numbers, but I want the final number, or a, a, a set of digits rather, to create a number, okay? but I want that number to be even, what would I have to restrict if I want my final number to be even? Let's say I'm creating a two-digit number. Okay, let's say for example, How many two-digit even numbers? Okay, how many possibly how, how many possible two-digit even numbers? Okay, well firstly, how many spaces should I set up? I'm making a two-digit number. One for the first digit, one for the second digit. Okay, so I'm going to make two spaces. Okay. And I have some restrictions on here. I want my number to be even. Well, how do you tell if a number is even or odd? Yeah. You look at the last digit. If it's even, what does it end in? ends in 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. Yeah, so if I want it to be even, you know, how many digits actually do we have? We should talk about that. How many digits are there? How many digits exist? 10, yes. So the digits that are in play, you're holding up your digits, yeah. The digits that are in play are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six, seven, eight, and nine. And that's actually 10 digits because one to nine is nine plus zero is 10. Okay, so if I want this number to be even, it has to end in an even number. So one restriction is on the last digit. 
it has to end in 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. So this has to be 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. How many options do I have there? Five. Yeah. Okay. How many options do you think I have for the first number? Could I put anything there? Almost. There's one digit that I can't put first. Zero. zero. Yeah. If I put zero first, it's not a two-digit number. It's a one-digit number. So I actually also have a restriction in the first digit as well. Okay. Here, this has to be one to nine. Because if it's including zero, then it's not a two-digit number. So this is nine. Okay, and nine times five is 45. Okay, so restrictions. The key thing that you wanna do with restrictions is firstly, you need to identify what the restrictions are and what spaces they are going to lie in, right? So identify restrictions and the spaces they are in. That's the first thing. And then the second thing that you want to do, and this one actually had two restrictions. So that's actually considered a standard of excellence question. Okay, one restriction is just acceptable. Um, but the second thing that you want to do is deal with your restrictions first. You do not have to fill the spaces in from left to right. Okay, fill the restriction spaces in first. Okay, fill those spaces in first. Okay. Now, this first point, identifying restrictions, can be tricky because it's subtle, right? Two-digit even number. There was a, two restrictions just built into that little phrase, right? One of them was that it had to end in uh, 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8, and because it's a two-digit number, it can't start in a 0. Okay, so it's subtle. Now, the more you practice this, though, the more you'll pick up on those little subtleties. Okay. Now, the other thing, though, is that if I said it's not a two-digit number, two-digit even number, but it's a two-digit even passcode, let's say I said that instead, could a passcode start with a zero? Yeah, so that's another layer, too, right? You got to read really carefully. Okay. First question, actually this first one doesn't even have restrictions. I shouldn't tell you that, but oh well. A math quiz has eight multiple choice questions. Each question has four choices, A, B, C, or D. How many different sets of answers are possible for the quiz? Okay, so I give you a quiz and it has eight questions on it. How many choices are you making? Eight, how many spaces should we put down? You're making eight choices. How many spaces? Eight. One space for each choice. Space for question one, space for question two, etc. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, Q5, Q6, Q7, Q8. Okay, how many choices do you have for question one? Four, yeah, A, B, C, or D. How many choices for question two? Same thing, yeah, so it's gonna be four choices for all of them. Okay, so that ends up being 
4 to the 8. I don't know what it is. Okay? And actually, to be honest, um, if this was a written response question, I don't even care if you come up with the actual number. If you wrote, if I saw that work and you wrote the final answer is 4 to the 8, that's good enough for me. Because I really care about your process. I don't care if you punch 4 to the 8 into your calculator. Okay? If you want to do that extra step for me, that's fine. But you don't have to. Okay? All right, here's another one. If there are four light switches on, a, on an electrical panel, how many different orders of on-off are possible if the second switch must be on? Okay, so there's four light switches. Well, mine only has two over there, but pretend there's four. They could be on or off. Okay, so how many spaces do we need? Four. One for each light switch. Okay, so four light switches on an electrical panel. How many different orders of on, off are possible if the second switch must be on? Do we have any restrictions? Yeah, what's the restriction? This guy has to be on. So how many options do we have for what could go in the second space? One, yeah. Okay, in the first space, what could happen? On or off, yeah. So we have two options. And then in the second one, or the third rather, on or off, on or off. Two, two. Multiply them together, that works out to be two times one times two times two is eight. Or two cubed or whatever. Okay, questions. Okay, I want you guys to spend five minutes or so doing the next two questions. Question six, or one at the bottom and question two at the top of the next page, please. Okay, so we're in the middle of page seven. Okay, here's another one. How many four digit numbers can we, can we make with the digits three, four, five, and six if the digits may not be repeated? We can't repeat them. All right. Four digit even numbers. Okay, so how many spaces? Four. One, two, three, four. Are there any restrictions? Yes, what's the restriction? Okay, they can't be repeated. Anything else? Even. Okay, so if something has to be even, what do we know about it? What do we know about even numbers? They end in? Well, in this question, yeah, we only have four digits to play with. So they've got to end in four or six. Make sense? Okay, so we have only, this is our restriction in the very last space. Four or six, because even, okay? So how many options do we have here? Two. Okay, we got two options there. Now we wanna go and place the rest of the numbers. Okay, well, they can't be repeated. How many numbers have we used up at this point? How many digits have we used up at this point? We haven't used two. We had two options here, but we've only put one of them in. So let's say we used the four. We can now take the six and put it back into the bag. Does that make sense? Yeah? Or if we use the six, we can take the four and throw it back into the bag. Okay? So how many options do we have here? Three, yes. Okay, so now what you want to say here is that there's three digits left after placing the last one. Okay, because whatever's left over can get put back into the big bag. Does that make sense? 
Okay, now once we place that one, how many letters or digits rather are left for this space? Two and then one. Yeah. Okay, so that's why this restriction must be dealt with first, particularly when we can't repeat or reuse. Okay, so that's three times two is six, times one is six, times two is 12. Okay, here's another one. How many ways can you arrange the letters in the word cruise if the arrangement must start with either C, R, or I and end with either U, S, or E? Yes. Okay, so how I got three here was because although I had two options, I only used one of them. So if I use the four, then I've still got three numbers left. I've got a six and a three and a five. So that's three options for this guy. Yeah, okay. So how many ways can you arrange the letters in the word cruise if the arrangement must start with either C, R, or I and end with either U, S, or E? Okay, so firstly, if you're told to arrange letters in a word, assume, unless you're told otherwise, that you're arranging all the letters and you can't reuse letters. Okay, just hang on one sec. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Three, four, five, six. Yep. Well, what you want to do is you want to make sure that the space that you're dealing with first is wherever the restriction lies. So in the first piece, right, the number had to be even. Well, how we tell if a number is even or odd is by looking at the very last digit. So that's why we dealt with this one first. Now, in terms of the rest of them, actually, no. You could have placed this one next, and then this one, and then this one. Right? I typically go from left to right, but you could have gone three, two, one. You get the same answer. Okay? Um, all right, so in this guy, where are the restrictions here? Yep. Beginning and end. Yeah, so the beginning, this has to be a C, R, or I. And this one has to be a U, S, or E. Okay, so that gives us three options for the first letter and three options for the last letter. Okay. So we're going to place those two letters. Shh. We're going to place those two letters. Okay. How many letters have been used up once we've placed those two letters? Two. Okay. How many letters are left at this point? Four. Because remember, once we place the first letter, let's say the first letter was an R. Okay. That C and I go back into the bag, and then we use them for the middle ones. Okay, so at this point, there's four letters left. Okay, so now these guys are just four times three times two times one. Okay, and I don't know what that is. You guys can work it out. All right, um, so I want you guys now to do questions one, two, and three. And then if we have time, we'll reconvene. We may actually have to start, stop there, though. <laughs>